Hello everybody, Daniel here. Just got back from the Bellagio, where I played the World Poker Tour Championship. Came in seventh place, was short stack for most of the last 50 players. Hung tough, had a shot here and there, just wasn't hitting the flushes when I needed to, but overall, I mean, I gotta be stoked about the, uh, the achievement. I'm not all that disappointed. Um, I know I've been putting in some big time hours and getting some big time results. That was my third consecutive main event final. Um, obviously, I won in uh, Australia. I came fourth in the EPT Grand Final and coming 7th in the World Poker Tour Championship. That puts me in a good spot coming in the World Series of Poker, which we're going to talk about shortly. Actually, let's talk about it right now. Um, World Series of Poker Fantasy Draft that I usually do with just a bunch of friends and stuff like that. It's a $25,000 buy-in, and uh, we're going to do it at the same spot as we did last year. Reach out to me via text, via Twitter, or some of the people that you know, like you know Jason Mercier or someone like that that are in it, uh, if you want to be a part of it. So that'll be on May 28th at 7 p.m., Similar format, slight rule changes, a couple to sort of um, give a little more points to those that make it really, really deep in, in those deep fields. Because uh, the point structure is only paying the top 18 in a, for example, a, you know, 4,000 player field. Now, for every 1,000 players, uh, nine extra players are going to get a point bonus based on the field size. So that changes things just a little bit. Um, tweak the main event a little bit also. And, um, but other than that, it's pretty much the exact same thing. The other pool that I run every year is the Full Contact Poker World Series of Poker Fantasy Pool thingy where I throw together groups of players randomly based on whatever I feel is fun, and you guys get to pick one from that group. Well, this year, uh, it's going to be powered by the GPI, the Global Poker Index, which uh, I think they've done an amazing job of really creating a ranking system that holds some weight. You know, it's, it's, it changes every week based on uh, results aging. Um, and also there's a game, the Fantasy Poker Manager, which you can play on Facebook and all kinds of things. So we're going to be powered by them in terms of how we're going to get the points. We're going to use their points. But the pool is going to be the same as it always was. And um, this year it came up with some fun groups. So let's take a look at each group as I do every year and give you sort of my pick on who I think is the best in that group for whatever reason. Well, this group, obviously I'm in it. And so you'd expect me to say myself, but I'm going to go with the best poker player in the world, which is Phil Ivey, in my opinion. I know that he's going to play a lot of events at the World Series of Poker. Uh, he's so dominant in all the mixed games. I'm going to go with Ivy. Well, this group is a little bit of a mix here. We got some old school, some new school. Uh, Eugene Kachalov hasn't been doing so well. Didn't have a big series last year. I got a feeling he's destined to break out. So I'm going to go with Eugene Kachalov. Now, I took uh, Vanessa Selps out of the women's group because she's just so good and it would have been an obvious choice. Uh, so here I'm going to think that either Maria Ho or Jennifer Harmon are the ones, but, but that's because they play mixed games. Maria, I expect to play more events, and I feel like she's in a good place in her life, so I'm taking Maria Ho. Now this is a really tough group. I mean, you could go with any one of the five and make a case for them. Uh, Danny Eli, you know, he's a proud father now, married, the whole deal. Uh, didn't have a great series last year, but I'm going to go with a rebound for Eli because... Seaver and Deeb might be playing Chinese, Selps might be saving the world with her law degree, and Dan Smith doesn't have a lot of mixed game experience. Now you might look at this group and think, wow, what awesome, sick, high stakes players who've dominated the online world. Well, each one of these guys are awful picks for your fantasy team. Uh, none of them have ever really played a lot of events outside of Tom Dwan, and that's why I'm actually going to go with Tom Dwan here. This has nothing to do with my belief in skill, simply number of events, and I think Durr is the most likely to actually show up. This is my O Canada group. All Canadians here, all great players. I'm going to go in this group with a rejuvenated Sorel Mizzy, another choice grad. He was in my LV127, so I'm betting on the choice juice. From Canada, we switch over to the UK. A lot of great players to pick from here. I'm going to go with a kid I've been playing a lot with recently, a kid named Jake Cody, Poker Stars Pro. Uh, he's over here already, I know that, so J. Cody's my pick. <clears throat> Pretty random group of good players here. Uh, one guy in particular, I feel like, plays a really solid tournament game and plays all the games. He's really the only one that I know of that plays all the games. I know that some of the others play them, but, you know, there's a difference between playing them and playing them well. So I'm going to go with Bryn Kenny here. I like to call this group the one-trick pony group. Pretty much all No Limit Hold'em players play a little bit of PLO here and there, but they're not going to be in any of the Limit Mix games. On a heater recently, I'm going with Joseph Chung. In the international old school group, I mean, all these guys, all their results has fa have fallen off the last couple of years. The one that's been, you know, relatively consistent, I'm going to go with David Shu. 
This is a solid group of mixed game geniuses to pick from here. Lots of guys who've had a lot of World Series poker success. I'm going to go with uh, Nick Shulman, who seems to have gotten the tournament bug the last couple of years. I mean, I don't even know what to call this group. You can come up with so many different names. In the end, I think I'm going to go with who I'd consider the most normal of these dudes. And that would have to be Chris Claude Nicky. In another group of mixed bag type dudes, I'm going to go with a guy who's been on a heater so far this year, leading the card player of the year race, and that's Paul Volpe. I know he plays all the games, and he's obviously determined to continue to play a lot of events and win that title. In continuing with the complete randomness trend, uh, I threw together five players that make no sense together, really. But anyway, there's a guy here. He just plays No Limit Hold'em, but he's really freaking good at it. So I'm going to go with him, and that's Andrew Lichtenberger, known as Lucky Chewy. If you've been keeping up with the Twitter war between Matt Merfiati and Yevgeny Timoshenko about who the prettiest of the two is, we're going to call this the pretty group. Um, and we're going to have Jason Somerville vote for which one of these four is the prettiest. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to bet that David Williams wins most pretty, and I'm also picking him in this group. So yeah, those are my picks. You go ahead and make your picks. As always, really cool prizes. First, whoever comes first is going to get 1% of my action at the World Series of Poker this summer, which I promise is going to, is going to be a little meatier than last year. I just feel it. A um, couple stipulations there, max of 10 k um, I'm not trying to go broke here. This is all money coming out of pocket. You know what I'm saying? Um, second through uh, fifth, I believe, is going to get an iPad Mini. Sixth through tenth, a six-month subscription to Poker VT. And as I did last year, 11th through 20th, is going to get a signed book. Now, don't be whining about how long it took. Because some of you, it took a while. I know that. Well, you got it, right? Okay? Eventually you got it, you know? So don't be hating. The other thing I wanted to talk a little bit about was my recent success. I've been on quite a tear. I've made four final tables out of the last five. Um, one miss and a high roller. Other than that, I've been on fuego. And, um, you know, everyone wants to gossip. Well, why? You know, what's he doing differently? Is it this or is it that? I'm going to give you my impression of what the num like the th top three reasons are as for why I'm doing so well. And the number one... The number one reason for my recent run, drum roll please, please, drum roll please, it's going to be luck, variance. Um, I feel like I've been playing pretty well for the last year and a half or two. Uh, just in those key spots, haven't seemed to have been winning those coin flips or even when I'm 2-1 to one favorite. The last few months, you know, things have been going well in that department. I've been running pretty hot. So I'm going to go with luck and variance being the number one reason, you know. Number two, the number two reason is... An adjustment in play by my peers. I think there's been sort of some new trends in poker amongst a lot of the younger guys that I find to be <laughs> really exploitable. Yeah, they, um, there's a lot of betting trends and other things that people are doing in terms of the way that they're playing. And I'm not going to tell you what it is because that's going to be stupid. I've done that in the past where I told everybody how I play, right? And then all of a sudden they adjust and then I can't win no more. So no, no. I'm just going to say that... Uh, Things are going good, you know, with the way the poker's headed. It's going good for the old D-Negs. Got the swagger. Let's talk about that swagger, because that's the number three reason, all right? Controversial. Drum roll. I suck at the drum roll thing. I can't even do it. The number three reason for my success is a place called choicecenter.com, okay? I did this leadership program there. I started in November, and I finished at the end of February. Um... <clears throat> And it was tough, you know, uh, there's a thing called discovery that you do the first weekend and then you go back for breakthrough through two weekends later. And uh, then each month, the next three months, you go through what's called leadership. So it's like a long time where you get a coach and you're working on a lot of different things. Everybody gets something completely different out of it. For me, I got swagger. I got my confidence. I got a lot of other stuff too. But in terms of poker, um, I just have a newfound confidence in trusting myself. And I have to say that, you know, I owe that to the training that I got at Choice Center. Um... I'm going to also say that it's not for everyone. Not everyone, you know, can handle it, I guess, because uh, it's intense, you know? It's really like an introspective look at yourself, uh, pushes some buttons at some times, but really, overall, I think it's clearly one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life. And um, I know from friends that have gone through it, they've also felt the same way. I know Antonio did it before me, and he did well in poker, but also just, you know, the things. And, um, some other guys, friends of mine who I put through. And that's, and that's not to say that 100% of people that have gone through it liked it. I had a couple friends who, there was actually one friend that I had that was like, she just was not into it. You know, she went through the first weekend, she didn't finish, and it was, just wasn't for her. Um, so I guess that's going to happen. But overall, I would say that the vast majority of people who go uh, attend the course 
come out really, really happy that they did. And uh, I know that I am. And uh, I mean, there was talk in the forums and Brian Mykon's going to hate and call it whatever he wants. But uh, listen, I know what I know. You know, I know what I saw. I know what's changed in me in terms of my ability to deal with conflict. And that's really important when you play poker because sometimes you're going to have, you know, those moments where you're feeling this happen, the burn inside your chest. And how do you deal with that? Are you going to like fold in the pressure or are you going to rise? You're going to have the confidence and the faith in your own ability to do that. And so from that perspective, my career, that's been very, very beneficial. Also just in general of how I deal with conflict. And I'm going to say that one of the things, I'm going to go a little deeper here with y'all, okay? One of the things I realized in terms of confidence was that there was an, I had an issue, okay, with a girl, right? Totally in love with this girl, absolutely madly in love with her. Would have married her, would have done anything for her. Um, she broke my heart in a big way. This was years ago. But anyway, um, I didn't realize that the, confi the confidence that I took a hit to there also affected everything in my life, including my poker game. But I didn't even know that. So I started to doubt some of the things I was doing and uh, starting to doubt and not believe necessarily that I belong amongst some of the best, you know? When you read the forums, oh my God, all you're gonna read is feedback about how bad you suck because they watched you play this one hand really bad on high stakes poker. Um, so that's, if you, and if you allow yourself to, to let that feedback become your reality, then it just is. And, you, and once you start losing your own self-belief, then you're, you know, your poker game is gonna go like that. So. Really just owning what I do, being responsible, living from a responsible place instead of a victim. There's two ways to live. You can whine and complain about everything being everybody else's fault and never you, or you can take responsibility for everything that happens in your life. And that's the way that I choose to live. And I, you know, I owe a great thanks to Choice Center for learning a lot of those tools. Um, and uh, you know, I thought about how vocal I wanted to be on it because again, there was controversy and this and that. But the realistic thing, I mean, I've, I've spent enough time now since I've, I've graduated and I'm done with it, to know that like all-encompassing, it was just a great experience. And all the people I know, the people I trust, like my agent Brian, who went through it first before me, and he's the one who told me about it, um, I just have nothing but good things to say, you know, about the program. And, uh, you know, <laughs> those are my top three reasons for my success. I can't deny it. I mean, for me, the proof's in the pudding a little bit. Uh, I went through the leadership and I didn't really have any results while I was doing it. You know, I wasn't playing as much poker because I was devoting. I actually remember I skipped the NBC heads up for a greater par purpose. A lot of that was to continue with this and not quit on it. Um, and I'm glad I did because after leadership, my results have been great. They're where I want to be. Um, I'm in a good place mentally. I'm happy. I'm looking for Mrs. Wright and I know she's out there and, you know, we'll find her. I'm kind of picky there too. I have been in my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> end this before I get in trouble. Anyways, so that's that. Yeah, luck, um, adjustments by the younger players that are not good at IMO, and thirdly, swagger, confidence, all that. You know, I always do this when I do swagger because it's such a like a pompous, arrogant, obnoxious thing to, to say. So this is how I feel I should look when I'm saying it. But that's it. You know, the um, the confidence that I regain thanks to choice. Those are the three things. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys soon. Uh, we're, I'm going to Cabo for the scoop events. I'm going to hang out with my buddy Phil Ivey, play some scoop. And uh, after that, come back, and I'm going to grind the World Series of Poker just like I do every year and hope to win that World Series of Poker Player of the Year, hope to win about four or five more bracelets, and hope to dominate once again like I did back in 2004. And it's starting. Starting. What am, what am I doing? I need to stop. stop. See y'all.